Those foot splashes are flawless. Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we are looking at the Roland VH14D electronic hi-hat cymbals. These are made specifically for the TD50 and TD50X module and they are also compatible with the Roland TD27 and a few of the VAD configurations. So we are going to unbox and check this out. Now for the past few years, I've been using Roland VH10s. They're pretty good despite being a single pad design. I'm really curious what the comparison will be like if you're going from something that's, I think these are only about $240. We're now upgrading to something that is well over $1,000 USD. So let's dive right into the unboxing of the VH14Ds. See what we get inside. Here we've got our owner's manual. Kind of hard to see from this angle, but basically we have one piece that comes out and we have some cables right here. We have an accessory piece. I'm not sure what that is yet. Drum key. Always good to have extras because we all lose them. Here we go. We have one symbol first of all. My God, this is awesome. Still smells like the factory. Check it out. This thing's huge. It's a 14 inch hi-hat, so it's gonna feel like a traditional, like standard hi-hat size. And next we get the bottom piece here. Be careful, it is kind of tied into here, so. Feels nice not having to do a full electronic drum set for this review, <laughs> because I always have a mess of boxes everywhere. I've got two hi-hat stands set up here, so I'm hoping I can connect them to the module and go back and forth between the two so we can really listen to the differences. As far as I could see on YouTube, there was no video that had these two showcased side by side. All right, a little tricky to get that off, we got it. We've got the bottom piece, very cool. Great design, feels very robust, nice and heavy duty plastic. It's got kind of like a nice stylized symbol design here, which is very good. Put these together and that is gonna be one nice piece of equipment for our kit here. I'm excited to upgrade and test this out. I already know, I mean, just based off of money alone, it's probably gonna be a better playing experience. But you never know, maybe you won't need to upgrade. Maybe you can keep rocking the VH10 till the end of time. It's, this is still a high quality instrument too. Let me see if I can figure out how to get this thing all set up. You can kind of see here. Might be a little dark, it's got Roland's logo here. We've got our USB connector that'll go to the module for the digital out function button on the back. Not sure what it does yet. We got a couple of extra pieces. So this piece here, this is gonna go on the hi-hat stand itself. We need to pick which adapter we need to use for this. And since I have a DW9000 hi-hat pedal, this is a thicker rod here. We're gonna have to pick the larger one of the three. But basically what this piece is gonna do is it's gonna stop the hi-hat symbol from spinning. So let me go ahead and get that all attached. This is the large one. So I think we're gonna put that right in there. Just like so. I'm guessing this plastic piece, this little insert they give you is just there to protect your hi-hat stand. All right, so I'm not gonna tighten down on that quite yet because I can do adjust the height. Now, if it's like other Roland products, we're gonna want the Roland logo to face away from us. So I'm gonna put this on the stand so that it is facing that way. And now with these, I need to figure out where these little inserts need to go. So there's like two little metal clamps that these wires sit into, and that will prevent the hi-hat from spinning. Very ingenious design, definitely dig that. I know that other Roland hi-hats have a similar feature, definitely good to see. 
And now the top symbol. So the top symbol, we need to actually undo a little bit here. A couple of cables. This is a digital hi-hat, there's a lot happening here. Question is, when I plug it in, will it recognize it? I may have to upgrade the firmware. I don't even know what firmware we're on. Okay, so we've got the A and the B. So similarly, we need the A to be on this side and that will plug into this connector. There we go, and then the B goes to the B. All right, very straightforward, simple to get installed. And oh man, that already feels amazing. Compared to that, no, this thing feels real. Yes, I'm digging it. This is dope. I haven't even plugged it in yet, I already want one. It's so much better. And I haven't even played it yet. So, we have to connect the USB cable now. It's right here. I'm losing things. This USB cable they give you is actually quite long. In theory, you could use this with a remote pedal set up right out of the box. You wouldn't need to get any extensions. Yeah, this is almost too much length. I've got it going into USB 3. Right now I've got the snare and the ride and now the digital hats will be plugged into this module. This is the TD50 module and we'll see if it actually will recognize it. Digital pad connected. Go to trigger settings. Okay, VH14D hi-hat. I mean it's showing it right there. Maybe it'll just work. The foot splash isn't working. So that's an issue. It's gonna be sick though, I can already tell. that to work though. Basically, it recognizes the 14D. I can't get the foot pedal to work, but it still opens and it still has a closed response. Okay guys, I've got the VH14Ds hooked up to the TD50 module. I had to update the firmware of the TD50 to 1.09, which is the latest version. And by doing so, be careful if you're gonna do the same thing because it deleted my entire user library, unfortunately. Uh, I was supposed to back up the kits before I did anything. Thankfully, I didn't have too many like crazy settings saved on here. It was mostly just factory defaults. Not too big of a deal, but I am absolutely blown away by this hi-hat. It works flawlessly now. And I've got the other one over there because I know I'm never gonna touch it again, is how good it sounds. So let's take a second here. Just kind of play it lightly and I'll open up the hi-hat. I'll play different variations of uh, different articulations. You can hear how it sounds. I'm using kit number seven, Bobinga Boom. So here we go. Those foot splashes are flawless.
One thing to note is if I do like a light, you know, kind of just barely open, barely open hit. Versus like super open. Also, we're gonna get a different articulation based off of opening with the, you know, the top of the cymbal versus the edge. And versus, you know, like, For the TD50 module, I'm still not a huge fan of the hi-hat sample itself, but as far as triggering goes, this is insanely good. If you're wondering if it's worth spending over $1,000 just for a hi-hat, it's really, really hard to justify, but the instrument itself is like nothing I've ever played. If your goal is to get as close to the real thing as possible, the VH14D is gonna be it, at least for right now. Hopefully the price will come down as Roland continues to develop other drum sets and other instruments. So that'll be good. It'd be nice if we could get this to be under $1,000, but as it stands right now, it's, it's uh, around $1,200, I'm pretty sure. However, if you do wanna pick one of these up, I will have a link down below over to Sweetwater where you can grab one. I am affiliated, so I will get a little bit of a commission if you make a purchase, but this is a fantastic instrument and I have no problem recommending this to drummers, especially intermediate and advanced drummers. Like if you're starting off playing E-kits, probably not gonna need to play an instrument like this. But for somebody who's adapted to the instrument and they know how a hi-hat is supposed to work and feel, this is gonna do you well. Hey guys, so there's something I forgot to mention in the video on the VH14Ds, and I'm gonna get a lot of questions about this, is that does it work good with Superior Drummer 3 or Easy Drummer, any of those VST type of instruments, and I can definitely confirm that it's gonna work way better than any of the other hi-hats that Roland has. It's gonna be the best experience by far. I did test it out, I didn't shoot it in the video. It is a little more complicated to do because you have to record the files in your digital audio workstation and kind of transfer them over. Mainly in this video, we were just kind of going for what is it gonna sound like out of the box? You know, it's gonna work with the TD50 and how it's gonna respond basically to our playing, what the articulations are gonna be like. So. Back to the video. This is an incredible instrument. I am completely blown away. Roland usually does an insane job with electronic instruments and this is no different. Let me just play a little more. I think the biggest way you can tell the difference between the digital and the original analog design is how many different sensitivity zones you can really hear while you're playing. So if I start this and I really just crank this down, you know, we'll get, we'll get really, really tight hi-hat there. Now, if I just begin to slowly, slowly open this up 
over time, you'll really hear what it sounds like. So let's just start quietly and open it up. So there you go. And that's just the top symbol. Like if I'm playing the edge, it'll be a similar, similar kind of thing, but we won't do doubles this time. We'll just do singles. Cool, and then back down. So there you go, that's opening and closing the articulations, how many different ones there really are. It's Pretty incredible for what we can get today with electronic drums. The only other thing I suppose would be the choke, which you can choke, you can choke really quietly, like, you know, or we can amp it up. And it's super accurate. Uh, I don't know of any electronic drum sets that have that level of sensitivity for the foot splash. Not that you really need it, but it's still like something cool to have. It's just one more step getting us closer to being like an acoustic drum set, which I'm all about. If we can get 5% more of the way there, I'm all about it. So you can choke the cymbal with your hands almost too. Just the response is a little bit slower than I'd want. And there might be a way to change that. But I think this has to do with like how the ride has the static kind of like mute feature. We can do that, it's the same thing. So that's cool that we get that. Let me plug in the old hats. Okay, first of all, it's not even comparable how much of a difference this actually is. When I'm going full force, I'm down. I can still splash, but it's not as good. Now, if I do the same exercise we were just doing. It's okay, it's really not that great. For Roland, when they came out with this, this is a fantastic instrument still, but now we're comparing the old VH10 to the VH14D, and it is leaps and bounds better. Let's try the edge real quick. Still a good playing experience, not gonna lie. If we're going from the edge to the bow, you know, with like some stick, six stroke rolls. I feel like the, the bow articulations are a little too loud, even though I'm playing them like relatively tamely in comparison to the edge. So you're getting that. Now, if we try to open up and
seems like it kind of gets confused as to when I'm opening and closing, even though I'm being pretty deliberate. It seems like I can get away with more on this one, whereas, you know, I can have it just kind of barely open and it gives me a little bit more articulation options while I'm playing. This one, it kind of gets lost in the mix and it doesn't have that same sensitivity with the foot pedal itself. Let me switch over and we'll do some six stroke. So immediately you can just tell like these bow articulations are a lot more tamed and calmed down. All right guys, so that is the Roland VH-14D electronic hi-hats. I am in love with these and in a lot of videos I say I can't really give a positive recommendation toward this drum set or this piece of gear, but with 100% certainty, I can recommend the VH-14Ds to pretty much any drummer, maybe not beginning drummers. This is a fantastic set of hi-hats. If you're already invested in the Roland ecosystem, there's really no reason why you shouldn't upgrade to these, aside from maybe the budget. Um, these are fairly expensive hi-hats, unfortunately. And like I said, hopefully we will see the price come down. But if you already have a TD50 kit, there's no reason you would not wanna at least try these. Go to a music store and try them out. You will be pleasantly surprised with how accurate you can really get. And you know, hi-hats have always been a struggle when it comes to electronic drums just in general. Like we're gonna go from playing a real kit and now we're gonna play electronic kit. The hi-hats are usually so disappointing and it's just not fun to play. I'm glad we finally have something from Roland that, number one, feels good to play, it's fun to play, and it's super accurate. It is the most accurate hi-hat I've ever played. I've played the F-Note kits, I've played Yamaha kits, obviously I play Roland, that's my main instrument of choice. I've played Alesis kits. I haven't really gotten into Simmons or ATV, Joe Becky, any of those other, you know, kind of like relatively more unknown brands, I should say. Out of everything I've played so far, this is by far the best experience I've had, and probably you will have too. So like I said, guys, if you wanna pick one up, I've got a link down below to Sweetwater down in the description. Please check it out. And if you guys liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you all in the next video.